the Lord. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise? Uh, can, can you give him your best hand of praise? Uh, can you give him a praise with your hands? I can like make it start with the earth. Praise the Lord. Because he gave his best for Calvary. Amen. And when we give our praise, we give the best that we can master. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to greet each and every one this afternoon in the marvelous and the all-sufficient name, the name that is above every other name. Amen, which is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you believe that is the greatest name? Amen. Amen. Every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. Amen. Even cancer has got to bow in front of that name. Amen. Tuberculosis stands no chance against that name. Depression, ah, depression is no match for that name. Hallelujah. And we are here, amen, gathered in that name to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. So can you just turn around to somebody, give him a high five or give him a handshake, sister to sister, and say, amen, don't look so sad. We are in the house of our Father. Amen. We want to hear directly from God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to give a special greeting to our precious Pastor Fortune. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. For opening uh, the uh, pulpit uh, of uh, this uh, marvelous church, this glorious church. Amen. And for having the confidence uh, in me. I uh, feel a little bit under threat because the last time you were in Pyramid, you were such a blessing. You lifted the saints. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm under pressure that uh, when I leave here, they can say, I really. The pastor came to take, take revenge. He came to make revenge today. Amen. Sister Mateo, God bless you, my precious sister. Amen. Honored. Amen. That uh, you've invited us. Amen. Here. Amen. Mamruti, I know it is not uh, an easy thing. Amen. But we thank God that you are still standing and that you are pressing ahead towards the coming of the Lord. Amen. We want to greet all the ministering brethren, the elders, the deacons. Amen. Those that are. Uh, Amen. Uh, committed to the cause here. Amen. In the marvelous and wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The songs that went before. What do we say about the representative from Pyramid Tabernacle that sang that song? Amen. Our precious brother Abdul. He, he waited for Boxburg <laughs> to make his maiden first song. I to be so. Can you believe it? <laughs> How long have you been crying that whole? He wanted an audience. No, we salute you, Brother Abdul. Uh, when the call came out for someone from Pyramid to come and sing a song, thank you that you said I'm available. I believe that's what a real soldier does. Amen. There's a call for you to perform. Amen. You're not looking for excuses. You say, I'm ready. Praise the name of the Lord. Shall we turn to the reading of the word uh, to two portions of scripture? Amen. We shall be turning to, uh, Gen uh, we'll be doing Genesis 22, but uh, let's start with St. John chapter, uh, St. John chapter 8, and uh, we will see how the Lord enables and unction us uh, this afternoon, amen, to speak as the Spirit gives us. Praise the Lord. Can you turn to St. John chapter 8 and we will read where the Lord Jesus, amen, speaks uh, to the Pharisees, to the Jews, and those that were in doubt about his Messiahship and about his calling. And uh, the Bible says in verse, um, amen, 56, uh, Jesus speaking, he says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. And then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Who believes that he is the I am? Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, but verse 56 is such a blessing. Your father Abraham, hundreds of years before this day, the Lord says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it. And he was glad. 
Praise the Lord. Uh, let's turn to Genesis chapter 22, a very familiar uh, scripture. I am just going to tonight echo what I believe our pastor Fortson has been preaching. Uh, we've got no message of our own, Pastor. We are just echoing, amen, uh, Malachi 4. And uh, so we're not expecting any, uh, uh, what do we call it now, gymnastics, uh, doctrines and, and, and things to try and impress you. Amen. We just want to speak what the pastor has spoken, I believe, over the last couple of months and years. And uh, just point you, the Lord willing, tonight to how uh, beneficiary we are of the grace of God that we can be called to the communion table. Amen. Praise the Lord. Aren't you happy that you've got an invitation? Amen. Take, eat, this is my body. Amen. Amen. And you've come to honor that invitation tonight. And so we just want to, the Lord willing, just uh, highlight, magnify the significance of that invitation and of the communion table. If it wasn't for Malachi 4, we wouldn't have a restored table. If it wasn't for Malachi 4, we would be having communion in the morning. I used to have communion in the morning. I was a dedicated Anglican, my brother. And uh, I would take my wafer and my grape juice in the morning. But we thank God that he came to restore the table and how blessed we are. So we'll take it from Genesis 22, a few verses of scripture, and uh, let's take it from verse 5. And we know the story how that Abraham got an inspiration to uh, praise the Lord, to uh, sacrifice his only, his only son, and they are on their way. And the Bible says, uh, amen, and the Bible says, maybe we must start uh, at verse 20, verse, verse, at the first verse. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Isn't that beautiful? Not any mountain, I will tell you which mountain, but it's in the land of Moriah. And verse 6, And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, Amen, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son, uh, and he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And so they went, both of them, together. Amen. Do you appreciate that, saints? Amen. Verse 10, And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and he took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, and neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Oh, I thought Jehovah Jireh means that the Lord shall provide. But the Bible says here, Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, 
it shall be seen. May God bless the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Father, we say thank you for just the reading of your word. Uh, Lord, there is so much life. There is so much quickening power in your word. But Father, may your word come alive tonight. Uh, may your spirit follow the preaching of your word. Because your spirit follows the word. Uh, it was one day when you were baptized, Lord, in the river Jordan by John, your servant, your messenger that went before you. Lord, and uh, Lord, when he was baptizing you, how that the spirit came down like a dove. Because the spirit always comes down on the word. As the word is being preached, we are under expectation for the quickening power of God. To come and make it alive and to quicken each one of us tonight. Whatever our situation, whatever our condition, Lord, the quickening, life-giving power of Jehovah is here to revive and to refresh us in Jesus' name. And the church of God shall so say amen. amen and amen. You may be seated. If I can take a title tonight, amen, for you just to remember, amen, what the Lord spoke to us. Uh, we want to take that verse from Genesis 22 that says that when Abram uh, lifted up his eyes and he looked that he saw a ram that is caught in the thicket. Amen. So for a title, the ram, not just any ram, this was a specific ram. This was a God-provided ram. And this ram wasn't just roaming around, but it was caught. And it was caught in a specific thing. It was caught in a thicket. It wasn't caught in the thicket by its legs. It wasn't caught in the thicket by its fur. But the Bible says it was caught in the thicket by its horns. Whenever God does something for everything, there is a purpose and there is a reason. Do you believe that tonight? And so the Bible says that Jesus spoke to the Jews. He says, your father Abraham, amen, rejoice to see my day. <laughs> Hallelujah. In other words, he was under great expectation to see the day of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I believe as Jesus was, in, was, was alleging or as Jesus was intimating that Abraham saw the birth, he saw the ministry, he saw the death, he saw the burial. Amen. He saw the resurrection and he saw the ascension of the Lord. Amen. Do you believe that tonight? Because Jesus said... Amen. That Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Amen. And, and he saw it and he was glad. Amen. Because by prophetic foresight, by, by vision and by prophetic insight, amen, Abraham hundreds of years before, amen, God opened up, amen, the curtain of time and he could see into the future. He could see into the land of Moriah. And he could see, amen, the embodiment of God in flesh. He could see, amen, this Messiah taking up 16 elements. Amen. Do you believe that? I believe that Abraham saw the Lord Jesus Christ born in a manger. Amen. I believe that Abraham saw Jesus at 12 years old. Amen. Debating with the high priest in the temple. And when Martha and, 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 and Martha, when Mary and Joseph came looking for him and ready to scold him, he said, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? I believe I'm talking to people here that are about their father's business. Amen. On a Sunday afternoon, and in this cold, you could have been under the blankets. You could have been in front of the heater. You could have been in front of the TV. Amen. But you are about your father's business. Praise the name of the Lord. And what is your father's business? Your father's business is to fulfill that which God had foreordained you to do. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Just turn around to somebody and say, I'm about my father's business. What business are you busy with? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says he was glad, he was rejoicing, he was happy, he was elated. Man, he was having a time of his life. Amen. Because just like Job, he saw the Lord's day. Praise the name of the Lord. And I believe that as believers, amen, not by prophetic foresight, but by revelation, we have experienced the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord. 
Do I have people that are rejoicing like Abraham rejoiced? Do I have people that say, can say, He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice. And He has made me glad. Amen. Because church is about being happy. Church is a happy place. Amen. It is enough outside where the world is trying to press us and condemn us. But church is our Father's house. Where we can clap our hands. Where we can shout hallelujah. Where we can smile and glorify the name of the Lord. Because heaven consists of worship. Do you believe that? Amen. Heaven is all worship. Revelation chapter 5. Amen. Everybody was in worship. Amen. Singing glory and honor and power and wisdom belong unto the Lamb. Praise the Lord. I believe we are glad tonight. Communion is a solemn occasion, but it is a happy occasion. Amen. Communion is a time of reverence, but it is not a somber time. It is not a time where we have a cloak, a, a cloak of, of, of darkness over us. Amen. But it is a time where we come with thanksgiving. Where we come with gratitude. Where we come and we say, Tino ten that is Lord. Where we say, Lord, you have been good to us. Lord, your mercy endureth forever. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 61, I believe, that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And he has anointed me, amen, to bring glad tidings of great joy. And then the Bible goes on and he says, amen, to announce to them that are in mourning, amen, to give them, praise them, make beautiful ashes. In other words, instead of ashes, he makes you beautiful. Is there anybody that feels that you are like ashes? That you are finished, there is nothing left of you. Amen. You are at the right place for your ashes to be turned into beauty. The Bible says he gives you oil of joy. Amen. Instead of mourning. <laughs> Hallelujah. The oil of joy for mourning. And the Bible goes on, Pastor Word, and he says, uh, he gives you a garment of praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. I trust you've got your garment of praise on. I'm not talking about your three-piece suit now. I'm not talking about your kitty bow tie. Amen. And that is fine, but I'm talking about a garment of praise that whether you are on the mountain top or whether you are in the valley, you can say the Lord is good and his mercy endure forever. Whether you've got something in the fridge or there is nothing in the fridge, you can say God is good and his mercy endure forever. Whether there is petrol in the car or whether you must hitchhike to church, you say, today I will serve the Lord because this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Is there somebody that feels like that this morning? Whether it is payday, amen, and there's no money in the bank account, or whether it is seven days later and there is nothing, we still praise the name of the Lord. Because our praises is not dependent on our condition. Can we get an amen? Amen. Our worship is not dependent on what we have and what we don't have. Our amens, our hallelujahs, it is based on the word. It's the right first word. Amen. Our amens is dependent on what God says. If God said it, amen, I believe it. I say amen and that settles it. If Jesus says I am Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides, amen, I say amen. If he says I am Jehovah Rapha, the God that all that heals all of your diseases, I say amen. We say amen, amen, amen. We say amen, amen. Ah, there's people that still say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, we say yeah, yeah. Oh, we say He is the ram that was caught in a thicket. 
Amen. Abraham had one son, a son that he loved very much. This was a miraculous son. Because when Abraham was a hundred years old and, nine, and, and Sarah was a ninety years old, God came to fulfill his promise against all odds. Against all probabilities and possibilities. Because he is a God that specializes in the impossible. Uh, do I have people that believe that God can specialize when things look dark and things look impossible? And then that's when he comes and he becomes a real God to us. Amen. Those things that you have given up on that you said, maybe it is not God's will. Amen. Tonight, I want you to believe that tonight, those things can happen. If thou canst only believe all things are possible. Amen. This is a son that they have been praying for. A son that they've been trusting God for. And all of a sudden, God says to Abraham, I want you to offer this son of yours as a, as a burnt offering. Now a burnt offering means, amen, there's nothing left but ashes. Amen, it means you give everything. There's not nothing that is left that you don't give. It is a complete and it is a total devotion to God. So can you imagine Abraham, amen, with this call and with this, uh, with this di direct instruction, amen, from Almighty God. But Abraham in obedience, believing, amen, that God is faithful to his promises. Amen. Believing that out of the son, amen, which is the seed of Abraham, that promise of God, that promise that says, amen, that your offspring will be as the sand of the sea. They will be as the stars of the heavens. God, uh, Abraham believed that through the son Isaac, that would be fulfilled. He had Ishmael, but he knew by revelation that that was not God's perfect will. But Isaac, being the promised son, was the, was, the, was the channel of God fulfilling his word to Abraham. But he trusted God and he followed and he pursued into the land of Moriah according to the word of the Lord because he believed the book of Hebrews says he believed that God was able to raise up Isaac from the dead. So he didn't know how it's going to happen. All he knew if God said I must do it in total obedience, I will follow the word of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Have you got that kind of an Abrahamic faith? Because you are the seed of Abraham. That if God says, this is what I want you to do, without question, you say, Lord, where must I do it? How must I do it? I believe you can do it for me and through me. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we clap our hands this morning? This evening? And so Abraham goes up to the land of Moriah according to the word of the Lord because God says the, 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 the land or the mountain that I will show you. It is not any mountain, it's the mountain that the Lord will show you. And one of the great foreshadows of the Messiah, one of the great symbolic representations of Calvary happens in Genesis 22 in the land of Moriah. Praise the Lord. Because this land of Moriah and this mountain is the very same mountain that the Lord Jesus hundreds of years later will be crucified on. Can I get an amen? amen. This mountain is the same mountain uh, range or the same series of mountains or hills. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Where Melchizedek met Abraham. Remember when Abraham came from the, from the battle and he met Melchizedek. You know who's Melchizedek? Without mother and without father. Without beginning of days nor ending of days. He is the Prince of Peace. The King of Salem. And this morning his name is Jesus. He met Melchizedek in, on, the, on the plains or on the hills of Moriah. Moriah is the place that David bought. Amen. From Ornan the Jubicite. And he bought this place because this place was a, was a threshing floor. Yeah. And he bought this place because he had a vision that this Moriah was going to be a place where the temple of the Lord was to be built. Yeah. And so after him, his son Solomon comes and he then builds that Solomon's great and magnificent yeah. temple on the very same mount of Moriah. 
So we can understand when Jesus says, when Jesus says that Abraham, amen, saw my day and he was glad in it. Because he was in the same inspiration and the same GPS location. As what the Lamb of God would be slain hundreds of years further down the line. You see the wisdom of God. Can you see the provision of God? Uh, nothing is out of kingdom. Your being in Boxburg is not out of kingdom. God knows your GPS location. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we say amen? And so Abraham goes up, praise the name of the Lord, with his son Isaac. Because Isaac represents the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe that today? Yes. Amen. The prophet of God teaches us that Isaac, amen, is a representation of Jesus. Because Isaac was Abraham's only son. Jesus was a God's only begotten son. Amen. Isaac was much loved of his father. Amen. As Isaac was much loved of his father. Can I get an amen? Yes. It, was, it was Isaac, amen, that carried the wood up to the place where they were to sacrifice him. Jesus carried his own wood, amen, up to Calvary. Praise the name of the Lord. Can I get an amen? I like a church that says amen. Thank you for teaching the church to say amen. Because the poor prophet teaches, teach your church to say amen. And your amen must come from deep. Ah, your amen must come from deep. Can we, can we, can we, can we, can we go to a practice session? Can you say amen? Can you say hallelujah? Praise the name of the Lord. Because Isaac, amen, for three days, they traveled from, amen, the time that, amen, that, that he got that instruction, he traveled for three days to the place where God appointed for the sacrifice to be made. And in three days, Jesus was in the grave. Praise the name of the Lord. Before he was resurrected. For three days, Isaac was, well, and Abraham was walking, amen, with this understanding, my son is dead. My son is sacrificed. But in three days, God made a way of escape. In three days, God provided a way where there didn't seem to be a way. Can we say amen to the Lord? And so when the boy then asked him, Lord, I said, Father, I see the wood, I see the fire, but where is the lamp? <laughs> Because if there's a sacrifice, there must be a lamb. And he says, I see everything is here. The fire is, the kelly is ready, but where is the meat? And then Abraham's answered by inspiration. And he says, the Lord himself will provide. He will provide a lamb. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. And the Lord himself provided a lamb. The Lord himself provided a sacrifice. Amen. That just doesn't cover the sin, but takes away the sin. Can we give the Lamb of God? Can I believe Abraham? I believe that Abraham was looking, amen, by prophetic insight was word. He was looking hundreds of years in the future when he uttered those words that the Lord himself will provide a lamb. Praise the name. Because God himself came down. Amen. Took on the clothes of a man. And he became the Lamb of God to be slain for your sin and for my sin. Amen. That is to not enough to make a Presbyterian shout. That is enough to make a message believer to say hallelujah. Isaac was willing to lay down his life. You don't hear that Isaac was fighting with his dad. You don't hear that Isaac said, ah, oh, really dad? All these years we've been together. Yeah. I am your son. I was the main one. How they now? No, no, no. The Bible. Not a word from Isaac. Yeah. Like a lamb led to the slaughter. Yeah. He opened not his mouth. Yeah. Wasn't our Jesus like that? Wasn't our Savior like that? Yeah. Willing to lay down his life. So that you and I can live. Yeah. Praise the name of And Abraham utters these words. And he utters these magnificent words. And the word is that the Lord shall provide. Or he says, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Jehovah Jireh, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Come on, all of us say that this afternoon. In the mount of the Lord, 
it shall be seen. I don't hear you. In the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Come on, all of us in unison, Boxburg Christian Assembly, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. In other words, friends, don't worry. The Lord shall see to it. In other words, in the mount of the Lord, the Lord shall provide. Amen. In the mount of the Lord, amen, God will make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. So when we say Jehovah Jireh means the Lord shall provide, amen, it's just a synonym of saying that the Lord shall see to it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If a boy asks you, who's your dad, brother? Or your mom? Yeah? Just show your mom. Ah, oh, praise the Lord. Ah, if you need shoes for school, you go to school and you need shoes. Or they say there at school you need to bring a tin rent. And you know you've got nothing. You know you don't even have a one rent. And if you tell mommy, and then mommy says, I shall see to it. What does that mean? It means don't worry, don't stress, don't stress, don't be anxious. Mommy will see to it, and she will be your provider. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise? Whatever you are going through, the Lord shall see to it. If you need a job, the Lord shall see to it. If you need a contract, the Lord shall see to it. If you need bread on the table, and there's people that don't believe it, the Lord shall see to it. If you need a husband, ah, the Lord shall see to it. You need a wife, the Lord shall see to it. Amen. You need a baby, the Lord shall see to it. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise? Who thought you would have such a beautiful place, my brother? A place of worship. But the Lord said, I will see to it. And today we can say, in Boxburg, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Look what the Lord has done. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Ah, God is good, and He is Jehovah Jireh. He is the Lord that will see to it. So whatever you need, I want to challenge you tonight. Say, the Lord shall see to it. Can you say, the Lord shall see to it? I can't see it, but the Lord shall see to it. I don't know how I'm going to make this week, but the Lord shall see to it. I don't know how I'm going to overcome this, but the Lord shall see to it. Because it's not by might, it is not by power. But it is by my spirit. Can we wave our hands for the Lord this morning? Say, Father, thank you for seeing us. Thank you for seeing our need. And thank you for seeing to it all. God can make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. And so they get on to that place that the Lord said he must sacrifice his son. And the Bible says, Amen, that he puts up. Amen, he builds the altar. And on the altar he puts the hood. Amen. And then the Bible says he binds Isaac, his son. I can't imagine your mother binding you like that, my brother. I can't imagine. I think you see, you love him too much, my sister. Amen. But Abraham was following and the, the, the listening to the word of Almighty God. Hallelujah. He says, Lord, even if you slay me, yet I will trust you. Amen. Because heaven and earth will pass away, but your word endures forever. Who believes that the word of God endures forever? Amen. The word of God, amen, defeats the enemy anytime, any place, under any condition. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. The word of God is mighty. Amen. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. In other words, the weapons of our warfare. Do you know that we are in a warfare? Do you know that we are in a spiritual battle? Even as you are sitting there, you are in a battle. Because your body says, hey, it's been a long day. This pastor, he mustn't preach too much. Does he know we will hear from the morning? You are in a battle. Amen. But there's something within you that says, man, my soul thirsts for more of him. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. In the church, you are in a battle. Because your mind, you, you're struggling to keep your mind, amen, focused on the word of God. Amen, you're worried about tomorrow. Come on, you can confess. Confess, confess one time. Praise the name of You're worried about so, so many things. Amen, what's the boss going to do tomorrow? Amen, we are worried too much. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Amen
praise the name of the Lord. But I want to challenge you just for a few moments. Amen. Let's keep our attention, our focus. Amen. On the word of the Lord. It's our only hope. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And so he builds the, the, the altar with the wood. He binds Isaac. And he's about ready to lay Isaac on the, on the altar to be sacrificed as a burnt offering. And he's got the knife up ready, ready to strike according to the word of the Lord. He didn't care what's going to happen in the future. He just knew that God is faithful. That he that started the good work is more than able to complete it. Do you have that confidence that sometimes you can't see the future? You don't know what's going to happen after this. But you can say without the shadow of a doubt that he that started the good work, he is more than able. He's able to take it through. And just at that climatic moment, when the knife was about to go down into the neck or into the chest of Isaac, his beloved son, and in the angel of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, because the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord cried out from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, not just once, twice he called him Abraham, Abraham. Because this was an urgent intervention. This was a critical moment. This was a moment of great urgency. Because the entire human race and the salvation of the human race, amen, was dependent upon this symbolic representation in the land of Moriah. Slay not your son. Do the lad no harm. And the Bible says that when Abram lifted up his eyes and he looked behind him, there was a ram. There was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I don't know, saints, if you know the difference between a lamb and a ram. But he saw a ram as if it is caught in a thicket. Can you just help me show my brother? Amen. A ram in a thicket. God provided not a lamb, but a ram. Come all of us say ram. Not a lamb. But we know that we always, he's a lion and he's a lamb. Jesus is the lion and he is the lamb. We know him as the lion of the tribe of Judah. We know him, even as John introduced him, behold the lamb that taketh away the sins of the world. Can I get an amen? amen? But what Abraham saw was a lamb caught in a thicket by its horns. And this, uh, this scene, amen, which was a foreshadow, amen, of Jesus' time in Jerusalem, amen, the thicket you know what is a thicket? A thicket is a is a dense bush. A thicket is a is a dense bush. There you can see. Uh, uh, I, I tried. I tried. I tried to get something just to so that the believers can see. A thicket is a is a is an intertwining mesh of of plant growth. I mean, there is no structure. There is no order in this bush growth. It is a thicket, and very often the thicket has got thorns. And you know that the thorns speak of the curse on the earth when Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden. When the Lord said to Adam that because of this, the land will be, will be, will be bringing forth thorns and thistles. Are you with me, saints of God? So it was, it was, like, it was, like, it was like this ram was caught into, into a, a place. Amen. A place of the curse. A place of sin. A place of iniquity. It was like this ram was, was carrying on his head. He was carrying the curse of this world. Having a thicket. No wonder Jesus. Amen. Was crowned in mockery. He was crowned with a, with a, with a crown of thorns. As a sign that he's taking on the curse of the world upon himself. Him that was without sin. 
He became sin for us. Amen. amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 We that were, were full of sin, amen, could now become him who is without sin. Amen. I think he deserves a hand of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. The ram pastor was caught in the thicket. Yes, sir. Amen. He, he, Jesus laid down his life. He had all the power in the universe. He could call on legions of angels to come and deliver him from the hand of the Romans and the Jews. But he willingly laid down his life. He says, no man takes my life. But willingly he gave up his life. Caught in a thicket. Caught, amen, taking on the sins of this world out of his own free will. Let's say glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 It was a lamb, not a lamb, that was caught in the thicket. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You know what's the difference, saints of God, for us that have not grown up on the farms? Amen. A lamb is under one year old. It is a baby sheep. It is innocent. It is meek. It is gentle. It is has got no fight in it. It is cuddly. It's like a baby. It is a lamb. But a lamb is a full-grown, matured, over a year old sheep. A lamb is characterized by its strong horns. And those horns speak of authority. It speaks of power. It speaks of kingship. And it is for his protection. That's why a sheep, a lamb, can fight with you. Yeah. He can battle you yeah. with his lambs, with his, with his horns. Yeah. Jesus had all the power, but he laid down his power. He laid down his authority. Yeah. Amen. To redeem you and I. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Here is a nice example. You see how cute is this lamb? Yeah, amen. amen. On top is the lamb. Amen. Praise the. In the middle is a. So, 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 I almost want to say as mama, as baby bear, mama bear, and papa bear. But that's not going to work here now. You know the story. Amen. But here is baby lamb. Here is mama lamb, uh, mama, mama sheep, and there is papa sheep. Amen. And we all know, amen, that the male is the lamb. Amen. Why do we call the... Well, I'm, a, you know, I'm a teacher by profession. So, so let me just test it. What do we call a female sheep? That is the lamb. That is, this is the lamb. The mama is called an ewe. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Am I saying it right? Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, let's give Brother Newton a hand. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? But it was the ram that was caught in a thicket. Amen. There we can see a thicket, saints. Praise the name of the Lord. There is the land of Moriah. Amen. The mountains of Moriah. And on Moriah, amen. Praise the name. On, on, on uh, the uh, mount, amen. Jerusalem Mount that currently stands, amen. The dome of the rock. The abomination. Am I talking to Mrs. Believers? Amen, that uh, Islamic, Islamic uh, sort of uh, a temple, the mosque of Omar, the prophet of God calls it. Amen, praise the name of the Lord. But in God's time, in God's time, it shall be torn down. Amen, praise the name of the Lord. Amen, but I like the idea of a lamb, uh, Pastor, because a lamb, amen, a lamb is instrumental in the economy of God. A lamb is significant. In the program of God. Remember, amen, that in the year of Jubilee, amen, every 50th year when the slaves were to, uh, to, to go free, amen, whatever doubt uh, debt you had was written off after 50 years. Amen, that was called the year of the Jubilee. Who would like a year of a Jubilee? All your debt written off. That car debt written off. House debt written off. A year of Jubilee.
to begin. Where the slaves can go free. Where the lame can walk. And the blind can see. And that jubilee was announced with a ram's horn. Amen. The blowing of the trumpet was not these trumpets that we get amongst the musicians. Amen. But it was a ram's horn that signified the introduction of the year of jubilee. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise for the year of jubilee? Where we can go free because of the death of the ram. Because the ram horn got to come from the death. The sacrifice of the Lamb. Praise the name of the Lord. A Lamb is significant in the program of God. When the, when the high priests were dedicated. When they were prayed over by Moses. You're talking about Aaron and his sons. We all know they were the priests. In the, in the, in the Jewish economy. And they had to be dedicated as priests. They had to be ordained as priests. Praise the name of the Lord. And there was a certain ceremony that they had to go through. And the ram was important in the dedication, in the ordination, in the laying on of hands of these high priests. Now this is important because we are all a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. Am I speaking to people that are priests? Kings and priests in the program of God. Come and turn to somebody and say, brother, wake up, brother, you're a priest. You are a priest. We must give honor. We must give praise. Say, sister, just another 20 minutes. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are a priest, my brother. What is your, what's your first name, brother? What's your, what's your name? Pascal. Priest Pascal. Praise the name. Amen. Hallelujah. And when those priests were to be dedicated by Moses, amen, they had to be washed first. What's the first thing? They had to be washed. Then they had to be clothed with linen. You couldn't just wear any jeans. You couldn't just wear any suit. You had to wear dedicated clothing, a special linen attire. Then they had to be anointed with anointing oil. Praise the name of the Lord. And then they had to slaughter a bull. Praise the Lord. And the blood of that bull as a sin offering had to be poured out in front of the altar. But then there were two rams that had to come and, and, and sort of cap off the dedication, the consecration of these priests. The first ram, amen, was, was the, the, uh, uh, Aaron and his sons had to come and put their hands upon that first ram. And when they put their hands upon it, it is like they were identifying with this ram. The ram was then slaughtered. And the blood was poured out in front of the altar. And that ram was burnt up on the altar as a burnt offering. The second ram is what we call a ram of consecration. Come on all of us say ram of consecration. We are talking tonight about the ram that was caught in a thicket. Amen. And from that ram that was caught in a thicket, God instituted whenever they dedicated a priest that they would have a ram of consecrated consecration. Because God is looking for a people that are consecrated. He's looking for young men that are consecrated, devoted to Him alone. He's looking for young girls that says, Lord, I am all yours. Praise the name of the Lord. And this ram of consecration, they had to lay their hands upon this ram. Then this ram was sorted and the blood was taken up in a goblet. And the Bible says that Moses, amen, would dip his finger in this cup of, of blood. And he would touch on each son of Aaron and on Aaron himself. He would put a bit of blood, a speck of blood, a drop of blood. He would put on the, on the tip of his right ear. Come and touch the tip of your right ear. Amen. Amen. A, a, a droplet of blood he puts on the tip of his right ear. The Bible says this, the second drop of blood went, went, went onto, the, onto the tip of the, of the right thumb. Not the left thumb. The right thumb. Put a drop of blood. Touch your right thumb. Praise the Lord. And, then, and the third drop of blood went onto, went onto the tip of the, of, the, of, the, of the right toe. 
Because we all know how important our toes are in walking. Toes are important in balancing. But the blood on the toe means that the high priest was walking in a balanced way in, in the sight of God. He was walking in the, in the direction and in the, according to the directives and the instructions of God. Where he leads me, I will follow. God is looking for people from the head to the toes. Amen. From the top to the bottom. Completely and totally consecrated to the service of Almighty God. From Monday to Sunday. From January to February. Do we have people like that today? That says, Lord, touch my ear. Lord, not, not, not so much my left ear, but my right ear. Just like you touch with blood, with life. You touch the right ear. So that I can hear right. So that I can hear the word of the Lord. Correctly and rightly. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of God. So you must hear the right word. Don't just listen to anybody. Don't just listen to any preacher. Your, your ear must be consecrated, dedicated. Because there's many funny things happening. That's what I hope you don't mind. Praise the name of the Lord. Many seeds that are being sown. But the prophet of God says, I have been zealous of the kind of seeds that I have sown. Your pastor is zealous of the kind of seeds that you listen and that you receive. So be careful. You can sit at home on a Sunday morning and you have a choice of who you listen to. And you can screw if you don't like what the one preacher says. I pass over it. Go to the next one. Huh? And you can go from Joburg. You can go from Paris, Australia. If you want Japanese with interpretation, you can get all kinds of seeds. But be careful that you hear right. And you listen to the right word. Listen to the message of the hour. Praise the name of the Lord. Your hands, your thumbs speaks of service. Be dedicated. Your service is unto the Lord. Not unto man. If you are a song leader, it is unto the Lord. And not to the pastor. Can I get an amen from the song leader? Praise the Lord. If you say hallelujah in church, and we sing and dance, and we clap our hands, it is unto the Lord. It is to the glory of God. It means your service is dedicated to the Lord. And you do what is right. That's why the Bible says, wherefore present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. I mean, do we have people like that here tonight? Amen. Our right ears, our right thumbs, and our right tools dedicated to the Lord. It means, it means your entirety, all of you are dedicated to the Lord. Okay, have you got people like that this morning? And says, Lord, my hands, you have no hands but my hands. You have no ears but my ears. You have no feet but my feet. Lord, as the ram that is caught in the thicket, I want to avail myself to you. Can I read what the prophet of God says? Praise the name of the Lord. And so the prophet of God says, and hey, you like the quotations? Can I, can I, is it fine if we still read the quotations? Amen. Amen. Quote number one. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Speaking about uh, Abraham. He says he reached down. He got the knife. He pulled it back. And he just started to stab this little boy into the throat. And about that time, the angel grabbed his hand. And said, Abraham, stay thy hand. God will provide himself a sacrifice. And about that time, a ram bleated and whooped with his horn in the wilderness. Where did that ram come from? Where did the ram come from? What a question. Amen. And the prophet of God answers that question. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Huh? Would you like to know where that ram came from? Amen. Amen. He says, Abraham was three days journey from civilization. An ordinary man can walk about 30 miles a day. I can. Yeah. I don't know how many you can go. <laughs> no, amen. <laughs> and an ordinary man can walk 30 miles a day. Then he lifted up his head and saw 
Amen. And so the mountain fell off. He says, what's the impossibilities now? Yeah. You see, because the situation was impossible. Abraham didn't have a plan B. The plan A was Isaac was to be sacrificed. And when the angel says, don't do it, he didn't have a better plan. <laughs> so the situation was impossible. But the altar has been built. He had told everybody he was going to go worship. So worship must take place. Sacrifice must take place. Praise the name of the Lord. Can I get a hallelujah? It was an impossible. What's the impossibilities now? Perhaps between 90 and 100 miles away from civilization. So here is a ram far away up in the mountains, far away from everybody. Then again, the ram was up on top of the mountain. Hey, how did he get on top of the mountain where there's no spring, nothing for him to drink, nothing for him to eat? Praise the Lord. And the ram appeared on the scene in the crucial moment. Amen. Anybody got an experience like that? Amen. That when, when you have an emergency, when, when things are tough, when things look impossible, amen, then God comes riding on the scene. Amen. You didn't have a plan B, but God provides an alternative. God provides a way. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And a, a ram appeared on the scene in the crucial moment. For he is Jehovah Jireh. He will take care of the circumstances and the emergencies. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't he? And he took the ram and he slew it in his son's place. Who was that ram? We are talking about the ram in the thicket. Yeah. Prophet of God answers, who was that ram? It was Jesus Christ. The lamb of God. Slain from the foundation of the world. He says it wasn't a vision. Because, because the, the ram wasn't a vision. It was a real ram. He picked it up and he killed it. And the blood ran out of it. And the prophet of God shouts hallelujah. Boxburg can we shout hallelujah. Then it was a real ram. Hallelujah. Amen. It was stuck out for a sacrifice the next minute. He says God can do all things. He can meet the crucial moment. Amen. If you forget everything else, remember God, He can meet a crucial moment. A moment of crisis. A moment of need. He comes riding on the scene. And somebody got a testimony like that. Amen. Amen. In a moment of crisis, God makes a way. Hallelujah. He can provide where there's no other way. He's Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide himself. How are you going to get well? When the doctor says you can't. He's Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide the healing. Says I'm a prostitute. I'm a harlot. I'm all these bad things. How can God save me? God will provide himself. A sacrifice. Can I get an amen? Say to God. Let's put our hands together for the lamb that is caught in the thicket. Point number two. What happened? He says God seen a need for a lamb, and He spoke the ram into existence. If you want to know how that ram got there, God spoke it into existence. Spoken with power. Let there be, and there was. Hallelujah! He is still the same Jesus that can speak things into existence. And I like this. And five, the, the prophet of God says, he, he spoke it into, into existence in one minute, and five minutes later, it went out of existence. Because remember, it became a burnt offering, and it was out of existence. You see? Hey, hey I'm getting excited. Praise the name of the Lord. God can speak it into existence. And then it can go out of existence. According to your need. He can speak something into your situation. And then for the next few moments it gets just to say to your need. Can I get an amen? He can provide the car because it's an emergency. Praise the name. Can I get a hallelujah? Praise the name of the Lord. And Abraham had to focus and put his trust 
in the realm that is caught in the thicket. I want you to stay with me for the next 10 minutes, saints of God. And we still got time, Pastor Will. I am enjoying myself. I remember one time in Cape Town, Sister Mateko, I was asked to minister there. And I was enjoying myself. Praise the name of the Lord. And then a few weeks later, Pastor Blessings, amen, came to show me an audio recording of uh, the message, uh, you know, MP3. And, um, yeah. you know, I thought that I had maybe spoken for 50 minutes, one hour max. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at the MP3, I saw this thing is two hours and 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, was that the whole service? <laughs> he says, no, that's just the preaching. <laughs> <laughs> and then it struck me. So, if you say amen, amen. I won't preach two hours. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Ah, there's a fellow amen coming through. But okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Where was I? Amen. He's a ram caught in a thicket. Just stay with me. He had to look up and he had to see behind him the ram caught in a thicket. God had provided, spoken into existence. You know, that is what, that is what Brother Branham quotes when he gives the testimony of Sister Hattie Wright. And, and, and he says, he was, he was talking to Sister Hattie Wright about the speaking of the squirrels into existence. Amen. And, and then the prophet of God, I got the quotation here, and the prophet of God says, it's almost like, it's like when, when Jehovah, it's Jehovah Jireh. Is it like when, when Abraham, when God provided, God spoke that ram into existence. And as he went on to the testimony, Amen, Sister Hattie Wright said, Hey, but, 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 that's exactly right. In other words, she said, Amen to Jehovah Jireh. She said, Amen to the testimony. And the Holy Ghost fell. He says, The whole, Amen, the whole place, you could feel like the place was bursting with the presence of God. Because for me, I believe, yeah. amen, that the third pool is connected amen. to Jehovah Jireh. I believe the third pool is connected to a ram in a thicket. Because the prophet of God says the first time the third pool was manifested on a human being was with Sister Hattie, right? And the prophet quoted Jehovah Jireh, the ram in a thicket. And the third pool manifestation came down. Ask whatever you want. And then she asked the salvation of her two sons. Amen. And God provided. According to the emergency. At a crucial moment. God provided an escape. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. But Abraham, he had to look up. And he had to keep his eyes on the ram in the thicket. And he had to go and loosen the ram from the thicket. Praise the name of the Lord. Can you imagine... If he had not looked up. Can you imagine if he had forced that knife into Isaac. And said Lord. But you said I must kill my son. And no matter. You can't change your mind. Now I'm going to finish you off. Because this is what you said. Praise the Lord. Sometimes as believers. We do things because we think that is what the Lord wants us to do. But there is a ram in a thicket that we need to keep our eyes on. He is the provided way of worship. Can I get a hallelujah? Sometimes we reject people because we think this is the way of the Lord. But there's a ram in the thicket. That is the atonement. That is the sacrifice. That is the redeeming power of God. Can I get an amen? Isaac. The name Isaac means laughter. Yeah. Isaac means laughter. Can all of us say laughter? laughter. Because remember Isaac was, 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 was. Remember it was, it was, his, it was, it was Abraham's wife. What is Abraham's wife's name again? It was Sarah that laughed in the tent. When the promise came that thou shalt have a son. And, and then she laughed in the tent. It was a laugh of unbelief. It was a laugh of <laughs> never. Oh, what? <laughs> it was a lot. Me being old? Ah, past menopause? How can this happen? And she laughed. That's why Isaac was called laughter. But did you know that Abraham also laughed? 
I don't know why the brothers always focus just on, on Sarah. But hey, let me swear. We always, always want to bust the sisters. But tonight, sisters, I'm going to stand up for you. Because Abraham also laughed. In fact, the Bible says, in fact, the Bible says that Abraham fell on his face and he laughed. Have you ever laughed like that when you just go, what? Abraham fell on his face and he laughed. When he was told you're going to have a son in your old age. <laughs> but I like how some minister said, you see, the laugh of Abraham was a laugh of faith. Whilst the laugh of Sarah was a laugh of doubt. You know almost what it is like the, the, the minister says, man, that car that you want, receive it in Jesus' name. And you say, I'm saking, but hey, I can't even drive. You know those things. You know those things. You say amen, but here inside you laugh. You say, ah. Amen. You are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And the pain is still here. And you laugh. You say, these people are making jokes. <laughs> laugh of doubt. You don't laugh outward. But here inside it's like that. But not the sons of God. Not the, I'm speaking to people. And when they laugh, they laugh by faith. You know when you laugh by faith, you create an African said, is it a great lecker? When the English said you, you get nice. You, you feel good. And you laugh. And sometimes we must not kill our laughter. Abraham could have killed.